super excited. We have Thea Flowers here of Winterbloom as our guest. Man, there is just so much to talk about. <laughs> so yes, uh, electronic superhero origin story. I would love to hear all about it. Like, how did you get into STEM? How did you get involved in programming? How did you get involved in designing electronics hardware and starting Winterbloom and the whole, whole <laughs> thing? <laughs> well, you see, as a child, I fell into a vat of acid and TR074s. Ah. <laughs> and here we are. Here we are. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Children, do not try that at home. <laughs> no, please, please don't fall into acid or TL 074s. Right now, they're they're rare, so sell those. <laughs> they're like gold. But yeah, so I, I was I so I've like there's like two halves of me, right? There's like this music and art half of me, and then there's this engineering side of me, and I've always been a little bit into both. As a kid, I was super curious about electronics and how they work. And I spent a lot of time at the library because there wasn't much else to do. I grew up in a very, very small town and I read a lot of old books on electronics. I loved the illustrations in those. Like I didn't understand anything half the time, but like, it's like reading like old patents about electronics. It's just yes. like, oh, this is so cool. But you know, I got into like that, that Forrest Mims style sort of, of yeah, yeah. illustrations, yeah. Yeah, and I got into music relatively young too. I've been playing guitar most of my life. So yeah, I I got into programming, really. That's really how I got into engineering. As a teenager, I wanted to make games. I never made any games. It just didn't happen. I got distracted by other things that I wanted to do, I guess. As, and, as, as we all do, as happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, you know, in my later teens, I was under the impression that like, I was going to be a professional musician and that was how I was going to make a living and everything. And that did not work out <laughs> at all. <laughs> I, I hear that is a difficult thing to do. <laughs> it, it is. Yeah. Astoundingly yeah. difficult. I mean, we, we survived for a while, but you know, I always had like a part-time job at a computer shop or something. Right. But eventually I had to go get a real job and I started working at a small web design firm for a bit. I didn't know what PHP was before I started that job, but they let me, they let me do it anyway. So cool. <laughs> awesome. I, I, I know it's a database thing of some sort. I'm, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's a web yeah. thing. I'm yeah. very much more of a hardware person and like the, <laughs> the programming that I do tends to just be all embedded programming for hardware and like the minute it's databases and web stuff, I'm just kind of like, Ugh. You, know, you know what? <laughs> your brain is probably healthier for that. Yeah, um, but at the same point in time, I feel like I am, if I had certain skills, I could do, I could put together some things a little easier. Like right now we're, we're well, after we redo our website, which is, you know, even yet another thing, we're like looking at how do we organize parts and in inventory? And yeah, some, some database and PHP skills, I think would be uh, pretty handy for that. Yeah, I am still terrible about tracking inventory. My I'm glad to hear that. Love that. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it's not just me. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So you know, uh, after a while, I you know moved on to a couple different companies, and then eventually started working at Google, where I worked a lot in the Python community, which I thought was really fantastic. I had a chance to do all kinds of cool things in open source there and help organize some conferences. And nice. I felt like, you know, that was a really transformative, you know, moment for me was being able to step into a role where I was able to spend all of my time doing open source stuff because I'm, I'm pretty crazy about open source because that's how I learned. Yeah. Like if it wasn't for weird people on the internet putting their software up for free i would have never learned any of this stuff so you know i'm i i feel like it's uh it's important <laughs> yeah, yeah totally i mean even in just you know the embedded software world like so oh i've God. learned so much from just reading other people's code on github and seeing how they did a thing and then i'm like oh okay now i now i have a framework for implementing this myself and have some ideas about how to go about doing that and yeah hugely helpful hugely helpful yeah especially like when you're working with hardware and there's like one right way to do something you're like how, how do i do this you gotta go find someone else who's done it yeah. but yeah like so after working at google for a while i decided to move on mm -hmm. and i i found this weird thing where i i realized that even though i've been playing music my entire life i was always better at 
tinkering with instruments than playing them mm -hmm. um, to some extent. And, you know, I started looking at the synthesizers and stuff and I was like, whoa, this is, this is the thing. Like this is, <laughs> this is like the, the union of engineering and music that I've been looking for. And like, I'd always been aware of them and known about them, but like learning about modular synthesizers with all these tiny boutique designers and all this interesting stuff going on there was really kind of inspirational for me to start exploring that space. Mm -hmm.